Begin by assembling the gauge and the pod at a workbench. Remove the two outside screws as shown using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once the two screws and washers have been removed, discard them. You will not reuse them for the installation. Lay out the hardware from the install kit bag. You'll have one bracket, two threaded standoffs, two washers, and two screws. Install the supplied lock washers and threaded standoffs in these holes. Using a 6 mm wrench, tighten the standoff. Do not over tighten as these can be easily stripped. Plug the supplied electrical harness into the gauge since it is difficult to reach after the installation into the pod. Feed the wire through the front of the gauge pod, then press the gauge into the pod and rotate to a level position. Place the bracket over the back of the gauge and use the two remaining screws to secure the gauge in the pod. A long Phillips screwdriver will make this easier to reach. Take one end of the nylon boost tube hose and connect it into the quick connect fitting located on the back of the boost gauge. Next you will need to remove the side dash panel cover, door sill plastic cover, the rubber seal, and the plastic vertical cover. The door sill has three clips and the vertical plastic cover has two, one at the very end and one in the middle. Be careful not to break any of the plastic as these pieces can become brittle. The boost gauge and pod are now ready to be installed on the dash. Grab the harness and boost tube, keeping them together. Once you fit the tab on the side of the pod into the dash crease, push the entire assembly in and back against the glass. Make sure the harness and boost tube are not kinked. Using a plastic pry tool, Start pushing both the harness and boost tube into the crease between the A-pillar and the dash. We will be utilizing a hole inside the door frame to route the wires to the outside of the door frame. You will need to remove the soft plug to insert the wires. There is a grommet that needs to be removed using a flat blade screwdriver near the door hinge. You can begin by routing the boost tube through first. Once the boost tube has been routed, you can use it as a guide to route the electrical harness through as well. Be patient. Routing the wires between these two holes can be tough. Here you can see that the boost tube and electrical wires have been routed properly. Now it's time to reinstall the rubber grommet near the door hinge. Using a sharp tool, poke a hole in the rubber grommet large enough to fish the boost tube and electrical harness through. Once you've pulled all the wires through, reinstall the grommet securely. Using a coat hanger or thin wire rod that is sturdy, Tape the boost tube to the end of that rod and push it up into the engine compartment. Make sure you route the wire behind the door hinge and other wiring harnesses inside the door. It is helpful to have an extra set of hands to grab the wire rod as you're feeding it through. Repeat the step for the wiring harness. 
once the boost tube and wiring harness have been successfully passed through, we will be hiding the boost tube and harness below the factory plastic covers. Using a pry tool, remove the two push clips holding the plastic strut cover down. Peel the hood seal back. Now you can lift the plastic and tuck the wiring under as shown in this video. Once you have routed the wires under the plastic, you can reinstall the hold down clips. Remove the plastic fuse cover in the engine compartment. IPD supplies a fuse tap and wire connector. Remove the 10 amp fuse in the upper left corner of the fuse panel. Replace that fuse with the supplied fuse tap. Once the fuse tap is in place, using a pair of wire strippers, strip both the fuse tap wire end and red wire from the boost gauge harness and twist the ends together. Using the supplied wire connector, unthread the small end of that connector. Feed the combined red wire through the end. Insert the combined wire into the connector and then re-thread the connector end. Make sure that the wires are secured tight. This portion of the video is specific to six-cylinder turbo models. IPD will host additional videos showing you which vacuum lines to tap your boost tube into and where to position your ground wire. Begin by removing the engine cover. Route the nylon boost tube under the intake pipe and over the top of the accessory belt. Make sure the nylon boost tube is secured away from the accessory belt. We use a zip tie to secure the boost tube to a factory engine bracket keeping it away from the rotating belt. Continue routing the nylon boost tube along the fuel rail. Route the boost tube to the middle of the manifold. Tuck it between the middle runner and under the manifold shown in the video. Once you've completed routing the boost tube, you will be installing the supplied T that incorporates the push to connect fitting. You will be cutting into the vacuum line shown here on the front of the engine. You can reinstall the engine cover at this time. IPD supplies a vacuum T that incorporates a push to connect boost fitting that makes it super easy to install and remove the boost line. This is the same fitting that is located on the back of your boost gauge. Using a sharp knife or a cutting tool, cut in the middle of the vacuum line. Install the supplied T fitting by pushing the vacuum hose on both ends of that fitting. If you have an excess of nylon boost tube, you can cut to the proper length. Install the nylon boost tube into the quick connect fitting. Next, you will install the ground wire. We will be using the ground located on top of the alternator shown here. Using a 10 millimeter socket, Remove the pinch nut shown in the previous clip located on top of the alternator. Route the ground wire under the air intake tube. You will have to cut the excess wire off. 
make sure you leave yourself a bit of slack so you can reach the ground location. Using wire strippers, strip the end of the ground wire. Take the ground wire end and insert it into the supplied ring terminal. Crimp the wire to the ring terminal. Install the ring terminal over the stud on top of the alternator. Reinstall the pinch nut using the 10 millimeter socket. Before reinstalling all interior panels and trim, make sure the boost gauge lights and functions properly when the car is running. 